بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب علم ود دا نیو ڈے کامس نیو اسٹرینتھ اینڈ نیو تھاٹس السلام علیکم ایوری ون مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر سعدی الفی کین انڈر دا سپر نیم آف پروفیسر ڈاکٹر سائرا افضل ٹو ڈے مائی ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن از انٹیگریٹڈ ڈیزیز سروینس اینڈ ریسپانس آئی ڈی ایس آر لرننگ آؤٹ لائنس انکلیوڈ the introduction of surveillance, types of surveillance, purpose and uses of surveillance, integrated disease surveillance and response, recent updates and multiple choice questions at the end. Learning outcome. At the end of this presentation, participants would be able to describe surveillance, its type, purpose, integrated disease surveillance and response and recent updates. Starting with surveillance. It is an ongoing systematic collection, analysis and interpretation of data and dissemination of information to those who need to know in order to take action according to it. There are five phases of surveillance. Data collection, data analysis, data interpretation, data dissemination, and link to action. Surveillance systems, infectious diseases, chronic diseases, injuries, health service uptake, vector distribution, and environmental hazards. Public health surveillance. Reporting in progress. It serves as an early warning system for impending public health emergencies. It documents the impact of an intervention or track progress towards specific goals. Help guide health officials and programs in directing and conducting disease control and prevention activities. However, surveillance does not include control or prevention activities themselves. Surveillance should not be confused with medical surveillance, which is monitoring of exposed person to detect early evidence of disease. At the local level, service, surveillance triggers basic public health investigations of disease outbreaks and specific control activities, predominantly for infectious disease and environmental hazards. The main national activities are measuring trends in increasing factors and diseases, monitoring the effectiveness of specific interventions, conducting more complicated analysis to determine risk factors and providing technical assistance. At intermediate level, which is a state or province level, public health agencies typically share both perspectives. Public health services include first health records, syndrome data, health service, national statistics, health research, social media, environmental monitoring, disease registries, laboratory reports, and other data sources. Infectious disease surveillance. Infectious disease surveillance is an important epidemiological tool to monitor the health of a population. The goals of the infectious disease surveillance are threefold. Number one, to describe the current burden and epidemiology of disease. Second, to monitor trend. And third, to identify outbreak and new pathogens. Major endemic infectious diseases of public health importance are diarrhea in children less than 5 years of age, pneumonia in children less than 5 years of age, new cases of HIV infection, AIDS, malaria, oncocytosis, sexually transmitted infections, and trypanosomoniasis. Diseases targeted for eradication and elimination are poliomyelitis, which is acute lacid paralysis, bronchiolysis, leprosy, and unit tetanus, and the in- Epidemic prone diseases are cholera, disease with blood, measles, meningitis, plague, viral hemorrhagic fevers, and yellow fever. Integrated disease surveillance and response. The IDSR, which is Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response Strategy, was adopted by WHO AFRO, which is African region in 1998, as a comprehensive strategy to improve disease surveillance and response in WHO member states in Africa, and it was adopted by Uganda in 2000. Integrated disease surveillance and response is a strategy adopted by countries in WHO African region for implementing comprehensive public health surveillance and response system for priority diseases, conditions, and events at all levels of health systems. Under IDSP, data is collected on epidemic prone diseases on a weekly basis, which is Monday to Sunday. Whenever there is a rising trend of illness in any area, it is investigated by the rapid response teams to diagnose and control the outbreak. The key objectives of IDSR 
the framework makes surveillance and laboratory data more useful, usable, helping public health managers and CM makers improve detection and response to leading causes of illness, death, and disability. Importance. IDSR brings many surveillance activities together to try and make sure that priority diseases can be controlled and prevented more effectively. Types of IDSR. IDSR 001A, it is used for immediate case-based reporting of any notifiable diseases. Then IDSR 001B is a laboratory request form for notifiable disease. IDSR 001C is line listing from which is a comprehensive summary of all suspected cases in an outbreak. And IDSR 002 is a weekly reporting. IDSR strategy or steps for it. So you can see in 1983, there was a conception of this idea. Then there was a phase of initial development which is the resolution was adopted. Then there was a phase of development of IDSR, which includes IDSR task force and implementation was law. And then it was the implementation phase, which includes the technical guidelines, including there was a documentation, there was an e-training module, e-surveillance was uh, started, community-based surveillance, and it was all implemented. And then there was a last phase, which is monitoring and evaluation phase, which includes the monitoring, revising, self-reporting, annual reporting, and then about review. And then the in 2017, last, the IDSR key performance indicators developed and monitored, and there was a review of the technical guidelines, and third edition was here. So IDSR e-learning officially launched. And so now this is like it's working. Infectious disease surveillance. It current, uh, con con uh, currently involves the healthcare delivery system, the public health laboratories, and epidemiologists. Each of these sectors contributes the four basic components of the surveillance, which is collection, analysis, dissemination, and response. Advantages of IDSR. It is a cheap, nice, since the same health personnel and reporting format I also use for routine report of health-related data. It creates an opportunity to computerize all the available data at the central level. An integrated security system creates centralized access control, providing easy monitoring of numerous facilities and other aspects of the enterprise. And nationwide security cooperation can help you centralize network security so your personal can, personal can uh, monitor multiple aspects of your enterprise from one location. Components of IDCR. Its core functions include the detection and notification of priority diseases, laboratory confirmation, data reporting, data management, data analysis, preparedness and response, and information dissemination. Talking about its three basic pillars. So, first pillar is structure and coordination at all levels, which includes federal, provincial, district, community clear processes for coordination and reporting. The second pillar is the core surveillance functions, which includes the detection, reporting, analysis, investigation and confirmation, response, feedback, evaluation, and preparedness. And the pillar three of IDSR is human resources, training, staff supervision, other resources, standards, standard operating procedures and guidelines, laboratory network, and information technology. IDSR core functions and support functions, if they all work together. The core functions are detection, registration, reporting, confirmation, analysis, response, and feedback. And the support functions are the training, supervision, and the resources. And how this they are up in coordinating, they interlink with each other, and, and now and by the coordination, this whole system works. So we can see. Collection, analysis, store, the uh, integrated disease and response, health management information system, environment and climate variables. They collect, analyze, and store, and then the process begins with agent-based modeling and simulation. Then the process by accurate prediction of epidemic, disease outbreak, surveillance, and reporting. The results are generated, and then the decisions are made by the policymaker, epidemiologists, decision makers, and health data stakeholders. 
district surveillance unit. It consists of chief medical and health officer, district surveillance officer, and the response team, which includes epidemiologist, microbiologist, and clinician. And then under them was the count and data entry operator, then administrative assistant is required. The challenges faced in IDSR are in implementation, the basic chunk you can see 43% is the lack of airtime or air bundles, then 18% is a poor network, and 18% is lack of tools, then 17% is inadequate knowledge or surveillance, 2% is inadequate staff, and the lack of feedback. So these are the main challenges in the implementation of IDSR. Disease surveillance, early warning and response in a crisis situation. You can see the first of all, the rapid assessment. We have to assess the public health risk assessment, displacement training metrics, population mobility mapping for health risk profiling. Then comes the prevention, which includes a risk communication, community mobilization, vaccination, and border space, and mobility hotspots, and migrant dense area. Then comes the detection, which includes a community based event surveillance and links to established disease surveillance and early one system and border spaces, point of entry, and mobility hotspots. And last is the control, PMR for disease containment, case management, and emergency operation centers. Talking about Pakistan, in July 2013, the disease surveillance system was implemented in the largest province of the country, which is Punjab, aiming to monitor and prevent future epidemics. The data collected from the healthcare facilities are reviewed by the committee and then issued weekly bulletin and alerts. Five most relevant diseases of Pakistan include Pakistan being a developing country have a poverty rate of 30 to 40 percent, which is a significant factor that results in a higher prevalence of infectious diseases such as malaria, hepatitis, HIV, dengue, tuberculosis, and influenza. So, if I summarize the whole of the system, the first is multi channel surveillance and multi point trigger. So, integrated surveillance system revolves around the case report, syndromic surveillance, laboratory reporting, and the cause of the death, which includes the death certificates. And we can collect the data from available sources, device based, school absenteeism, drug sale trends, internet searches, customer content data, social media discussion, environmental factors, etc. The second step is data analysis and early warning, establish internal technical forum, improve diagnostic, concentrate. Develop standardized open source analysis tool and targeted surveillance based on epidemiological research. And the third is sustainable surveillance system, which includes a strengthened communication with stakeholders, periodically assess its quality, timeliness, sensibility, and flexibility, strengthen health education to eliminate discrimination, and pay more attention to privacy protection. Now, moving towards the recent updates. According to WHO technical guidelines for integrated disease surveillance and response in the Africa region third edition, as I've already mentioned, it has updated the, uh, the technical guidelines and the third edition has been uh, published by WHO. So it is the IDSR district level training course, which is being offered by WHO region office for Africa. The purpose of this course is to introduce health staff to the skills and activities required for functional disease surveillance systems so that public health threats are detected in time to do something about them. In IDSR, all levels of health systems are involved in conducting surveillance activities for detecting and responding to priority diseases and conditions. Through the modules in this course, you will be able to practice using skills that will help to strengthen the use of data for action at the district level. IDSR Weekly Bulletin. It is uh, done by National Institute of Health, which is of uh, Pakistan. NIH publishes a weekly integrated disease surveillance and response bulletin that updates its activities and endeavors in the area of priority disease detection and notification, data reporting, data management, data analysis, preparedness, response, and information dissemination. It is like you can see the weekly bulletin. It comes. All the PDFs are available online, and it was the bullet. It is the bulletin of September, Volume Three and Week Thirty Five. 
It is the IDS report and it is shown we a world field epidemiological day promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion in field epidemiology. So it was of September. There was an article which shows uh, integrated disease surveillance and response strategy, current state of challenges and perspective and for the future in Africa. In 1998, the WHO Africa and Asia adopted a strategy called IDSR. By December 2017, 44 of 47 countries, which is 94%, were implementing IDSR. So 44, you can see a large number has initiated IDSR training at subnational level. 68% commenced community-based surveillance. 74% event-based surveillance, electronic IDSR, monthly bulletin for sharing. 32 countries have achieved the timeliness and completeness threshold, at least 80%. And only 12 countries have the desired target of that at least 90% IDSR implementation coverage at the present level. So Africa and countries are really working very hard on it. The next article was integrated disease surveillance response in Malawi, implementation gaps and challenges for timely alert. Basically, this was a combined sort of uh, the recent Ebola virus disease outbreak. Worked on it. It was a mixed research met, um, uh, study was done. Quantitative data was collected and the qualitative data was also collected. The current ideas have showed relatively good completeness, 73.1%, but poor timeliness, 40% for total expected monthly reports, nationwide and zero weekly reports during the study period. Major implementation gaps were lack of weekly reports and trainings. The challenges of ideas and implementation revealed through qualitative data included case identification, compiling, reporting for timely submission, and inadequate resources. So the conclusion was the difference between IDSCR technical guidelines and actual practices was huge. The developing information technology infrastructure in Malawi and emerging mobile health technology can be opportunities for the country to overcome these challenges and improve service system to have better timeliness for the outbreaks and unusual events detection. Now it's time for MCQs. Question number one, public health service surveillance is one of the methods that a community can use to monitor its population cells by detecting problems. At the national level, surveillance triggers which of the following level of activities? A. Investigation of communicable disease outbreaks. Investigation of non-communicable disease. Specific control activities predominantly for infectious disease. Specific control activities predominantly for environmental hazards. And monitoring the effectiveness of specific interventions of disease. The correct option is E, monitoring the effectiveness of specific intervention of disease. Question two, public health surveillance program should improve the public health system efficiencies and effectiveness, which is a key factor in population health from a societal perspective. Which of the following are not typical uses and applications of public health surveillance? A, identifying and treating each case of malaria, helping health officials allocate disease control resources, change in the proportion of children in a community with high blood lead levels, disease prevention and control programs, very serious chicken percentage incidence after a law requiring vaccination. The correct option is D, disease prevention and control programs. High quality Presentary data from government on HIV monitoring systems are critical for national HIV interventions, especially among priority population. Which of the following is the most effective way to keep an eye on the spread of HIV AIDS? Active surveillance, passive surveillance, sentinel surveillance, syndromic surveillance, or event-based surveillance? B. The correct option is A, active surveillance. Effective public health system in XYZ country collect data in a standard method, analyze it often, and communicate the results. Which of the following is a common way to collect data for surveillance? Action research, case report, cost experimental studies, randomized controls, or disease notification? D. 
Yes, the correct option is C, the case support. Public health surveillance in any XYZ country is important to modern public health practice. At the local level, surveillance triggers basic public health investigation of disease outbreak and specific control activities predominantly of chronic diseases, of communicable diseases, occupational hazards, presence of viruses and mosquitoes, and non-communicable diseases. The correct option B. is C, occupational hazards. Data and information for public health surveillance are used to assess and characterize the burden and distribution of adverse health occurrence. Public health services include which of the following activities? Disease control, disease elimination, data collection and analysis, disease eradication, and disease extinction. C. C is the correct option, data collection and analysis. ABC country's public health service system produces cancer data and information to assess and describe the burden and distribution of cancer adverse health occurrences. However, the surveillance system of ABC country does not encompass each of the following activities. Data collection, data analysis, data interpretation, disease eradication, and data dissemination. The correct option is B, data analysis. B? Yes. B? Yes. In July 2013, the surveillance system was implemented in the largest province of Pakistan, Punjab, aiming to monitor and prevent future epidemics. The data collected from all the healthcare facilities are reviewed by the committee that then issue weekly bulletin and alert, which was the system in the following given options. Disaster early warning system, disaster management system, early warning alert and reporting network, emergency alert system, integrated disease surveillance and response. E is the correct option, integrated disease surveillance and response. The integrated disease surveillance and response framework makes surveillance and laboratory data more useful, helping public health managers and decisions make an improved detection and response to the leading causes of illness, death, and disability. Which of the following statement is true regarding IDSR? IDSR is a type of active surveillance where data on carotid disease is actively collected in the community. IDSR is cost effective and helpful for integrating data on all reportable diseases at central level to identify priority disease in the community, community health workers and members of the community should use standard case definitions. Diseases targeted for identification should be reported weekly to the high level and one case of the disease cannot be an indication of an epidemic. Which one of the option is true? A. A. It's B. IDSR is cost effective and helpful for integrating data on all reportable diseases at central level. Last question. IDSR brings many surveillance activities together to try and make sure that priority diseases can be controlled and prevented more effectively. Which one of the following health problem is not an immediately reportable disease? A, polio, B, avian influenza, C, rabies, D, malnutrition, E, neonatal tetanus. E? D is the correct option, malnutrition. This is the key of my MCQs. This is our YouTube link. And thank you so much.